Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Omar Bumbahri. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Castile, uh, uh, microelectronics and uh, instrumentation lab. Unfortunately, uh, other team members couldn't uh, come. So the topic of our mission idea is NetCubeSat and SDR based communication system for climate change understanding. Over 90% of scientists agree global warming is a reality. Therefore, our idea aims to monitor and control climate change in order to limit air pollution and global warming. According to uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the temperature projected to experience an increase of 0.3 to 4.8 degrees Celsius by this uh, by 2100. Imagine this future. It could see truly catastrophic events. Many plants will be disappeared and many areas will be a desert and the critical fact, ice melting, which leads to rise sea level. And here the process becomes self-reinforcing. More oceans surface means more heat absorbed, which rise Earth's temperature. So, in fact, there are uh, many factors uh, cause, that causes global warming, including natural causes, which uh, have been at work even before the birth of uh, mankind. However, having thought our responsible way of life is not the only cause of global warming. Our responsibility for causing Earth's warming is not negligible. We are uh, rapidly hustling the global warming process by uh, our large-scale uh, emission of gas into the atmosphere, such as uh, the carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, particle matter, and many, many other uh, pollutant gas by deforestation, rapid industrialization, and increased automobile use and many other activities. So, we need to do something to reduce air pollution today. Therefore, uh, we propose to integrate the nanosatellite technology in eye monitoring routine for climate protection purpose, aiming to fight against eye pollution in order to limit the temperature rising and provide the system for real-time air quality monitoring, in addition to lower the barriers to transmit data in the region without infrastructure in real-time. Indeed, the step one of our proposal is to provide a permanent coverage for real-time monitoring, especially for the areas in the countries under development, for example, North Africa. Why? In fact, global warming and reduce additional factor of inequality and disparity between the different geographical areas of the globe. The population of the world's poorest country are the most vulnerable to the effect of climate change as they are the least responsible. The countries under development are in fact not able to guard against the impact of the phenomenon and to adapt. Therefore, our proposal is to cover this area in order to fight against nature enemies. To accomplish this goal, uh, we proposed this uh, architecture, which contains uh, <coughs> three main segments, the space segment, the ground segment, and the user segment. For the space segment, we propose 
to launch a constellation of 99 satellites conceived to use one unit standard. Uh, the ground uh, segment uh, consists of a ground station connected to the climate uh, administrator server uh, which encompasses a network of air quality monitoring. Uh, the nano satellites uh, used the UHF band for downlink for the data uh, for the mission data downlink after being received through the ground station uh, the data are distributed through uh, internet uh, uh, the user segment fixed near of uh, gas emission source which is consists of uh, air quality measurement sensors, microcontroller unit, and software defined radio module in order to use the nano satellite uh, for a real time transmission via the VHF protocol. Uh, this mission required uh, uh, one unit CubeSat in order to be launched uh, used. The Polypic Satellite Orbital Deployer System. Its mass is about one kilogram. Uh, for the communication purpose, we propose to use the SDR module for VHF, uh, VHF for opening and UHF for uh, downlink, which has uh, high performance, uh, small size. Indeed, the application of SDR in space uh, is a recent innovation. Uh, so for the inter-satellite link, we propose to use the S-band. And for attitude determination and control system, we propose to use the following uh, sun sensor, gyron magnetometer sensors, and magnetorpers. Installing reference uh, eye monitoring uh, systems based on uh, gas analyzers in one way to measure gas emissions, but their cost and size limit uh, the eye quality monitoring locations. In addition, analyzers log only every uh, 30 or 60 minutes, which which is often not sufficient topper resolution for air quality measurement. Therefore, we propose to use sensors rather than analyzers, which give two big advantages. Parameters can be measured and logged every minute, and sensors are cheaper than analyzers. Uh, the user segment and uh, the space segment link based on VHF uh, band. The SDR module adapts the signal received from uh, the sensors via the microcontroller unit to the appropriate uh, protocol of communication and uh, transfer it uh, to, the sat uh, to the nano satellites. Uh, the, pro the proposed uh, sensors for this mission are the following uh, particle matter, which is generated from all types of uh, combustion, uh, such as motor vehicles, uh, wood burning, uh, power plants, and some uh, of uh, industri industrial uh, activities. These particles negatively affect climate and the human health. In addition, the carbon dioxide is among the main greenhouse gas that cause global warming and climate change. In addition, the nitrous oxide is also among the main greenhouse gas released into the atmosphere that has global warming potential. Uh, its origin uh, partly natural, about 60%, and partly uh, man-made, about 40%. And finally, the method. Since the beginning of 
industrial evolution, the methane concentration was more than doubled into the atmosphere, and it contributes with about 20% to the increase of greenhouse effects. The ground station connected with the climate administrator server through the internet uh, for the down uh, downlink machine data. We propose to use the UHF band with 437 megahertz and 9.6 kilobytes per second. For the uplink commands, we uh, propose to use the VHF protocol with 145 megahertz and with 1.2 uh, kilobytes uh, per second. The, the visibility about 10 uh, minutes per uh, visit. Uh, the ground station receives the monitoring data each orbital period. Uh, this mission aimed to uh, use the smart sensors to, in order to achieve the required objectives. Uh, this figure uh, shows the block, block diagrams of the sensor board. Uh, each sensor uh, connected to the microcontroller through the I2C uh, bus. Uh, the use of this kind of uh, sensors has uh, have many benefits, such as local sensor networks are an exciting idea with great potential. These instruments can be configured to log real-time data on gas, particulate, noise, and weather parameters. And data can be transmitted wirelessly in addition of the ease of integration. Uh, the increasing small satellite missions and uh, the evolution of transceiver and hardware options involved in implementing SDRs in space. Uh, it's a wireless communication device where the transmitter and receiver operations are changed or modified by software alone without making any change to the hardware. So this uh, figure shows an example of uh, an SDR communication platform, which is a combination between uh, system on ship and an SDR uh, communication uh, platform, which enables a reduction of uh, size as well as cost. <coughs> Sorry. In addition, uh, of the different parallelization of analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter, and the, the FPGA, which enables uh, the reduction of power consumption, which is a necessary factor for uh, for designing small satellites. Uh, let's summarize the benefits of this uh, device. A single hardware platform for several standards and systems which enables the reduction of the of the, uh, development costs and to use as much as possible of the shelf components which enables the reduction of the equipment costs in addition of the reduction of size and weight of equipment radio of waveform can be changed in operation throughout software control provide high data rate which allows the download of mission data directly upon request. Now this table summarizes uh, or gives an overview about the link budget of the satellite, include, uh, including the VHF band for download uh, for uplink, uh, UHF band for uh, downlink and the S-band for inter-satellite links. So, as a first step that I mentioned, uh, we propose to cover North Africa for uh, about uh, all the day.
uh, in this part, we look at the number of nanosatellite necessary uh, after calculation and uh, using SCK software. Uh, we, uh, nine nanosatellites needed to accomplish uh, this goal, which are distributed in five uh, orbits, as indicated in this uh, table. Uh, with this approach, we can have about continuity coverage uh, for about all the day, as indicated in the above uh, figure. <coughs> This table uh, give an overview of uh, our mission schedule from the conceptual design to the constellation launch. To accomplish this goal, Microelectronic and Instrumentation Lab will be responsible for the development of air monitoring system and IDCS system in addition of orbit and constellation management and to develop technical means. The ground station is under development at the University of uh, Monastir and our expected partners are Regime Lab and ESEE Lab from Sfax University and Sous University for satellites, data processing algorithms and satellite pass design and the communication network management and we are looking for more partners and sponsors uh, for this uh, idea. So let's conclude. If global warming continues to worsen and anthropogenic activity continues to exacerbate our fragile environments, we will most certainly see a threat in our life security. Uh, this mission provides a solution to monitor and control climate change in order to mitigate the global warming. We probably cannot stop climate change, but we can slow it down. So, let's say that. Thank you for your attention. as well, the good one, <laughs> and an interesting one. Uh, one question is left, in my opinion. Why did you choose nine satellites for the coverage? It's uh, yeah, that sorry. five. And why did you use nine satellites nine for nine continuous satellite. coverage? Not five, not three, it's nine. Uh, the purpose is to cover uh, these areas for about all the day. So, uh, as calculated for uh, to 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 uh, cover or to find this uh, coverage, we should use we should use uh, nine satellites, maybe uh, more for the total coverage for uh, all the day. Well, that's not the answer I expected. It's nine. Do, do you have a, a contact time of uh, every five minutes, ten minutes, and? Uh, what, what, what is the reason for, for the nine, not five? I mean, five you can do it as well. You have ten minute ground, uh, ground uh, contact, contact and, uh, and you can send it up and down as often as you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, uh, <laughs> those are not my calculation. Uh, and, uh, those are not my choice for uh, choosing nine nine satellites. Okay. Came out of the eighty key simulation. But I will not your comments. Okay, so uh, your mission is to set some uh, ground sensors mm -hmm. and this data monitor the uh, content of the air around the ground level mm -hmm. and it will be transmitted to the satellites. Yeah. And the satellite to relay that information to the ground. Yeah. So it is sometimes called the data collection or store and board mission. Maybe so my understanding is correct? Uh, the sensors, since uh, yes. the gas emissions, uh, before 